Good morning, dear friends. What a joy it is for us to be together on the first working day of this new week. And as we prepare ourselves to face the challenges of this day and opportunities also, we ask thy Holy Spirit to use this meditation to strengthen our faith and uh, depend on Jesus Christ as the Holy Spirit will help us to experience His grace and His power in our lives. Today's meditation is based on these two creative miracles Jesus performed, which are found in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 2 and also chapter 6. There are two creative miracles Jesus did in these two chapters. In both, Jesus allowed his disciples to participate. And the miracle of bread speaks of uh, his body. The broken bread represents the body on the cross. And in turning water into wine, Jesus uh, must have been moved in the spirit um, and uh, uh, speaks about his precious blood. As the wine was poured out and given, so was the blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross was given out for the remission of humanity's sin. The miracle of the bread is the only miracle that is recorded in all four evangelists uh, in their Gospels. And even the miracle of raising Lazarus was recorded only in the Gospel according to St. John. Now, it shows the importance of uh, this miracle. And uh, it, it definitely means there is something uh, of importance attached to this miracle. And for one thing, it is a personal revelation of who Jesus Christ truly is. And, and uh, really, really, who is he? It speaks of his person and the purpose of his coming. Why he was sent into this world? And why was he born? And... Uh, Jesus is the bread of life. He is the living bread or life-giving bread. And uh, this miracle also significant because of the way the miracle really happened. Did Jesus multiply the bread? We have to find the answer in the words of Jesus to his disciples. He told his disciples, you give them something to eat. Now, is he asking them something impossible? Yes. But Jesus never asked anyone to do something, although impossible, for them unless he knew what can happen. They were able to do it by faith. Moreover, Jesus never asked his disciples anything uh, that is possible. That's why Christian life itself is a miracle. A new birth itself is a miracle. And the living of it is a greater miracle. And the next thing to notice is this. This was his most public of all the miracles. He performed this miracle and it happened in the presence or before thousands of people. And they all participated in it. Taken together in these two uh, miracles, the person of Jesus Christ is seen. His body in the broken bread and his blood in the, in the, in the, in, in the wine. 
And that, what does that mean? It means God in the flesh. His body is there and uh, life is in the blood. And so put together, you have the whole person of Jesus Christ or God in the flesh. In the broken bread in his hand, Jesus saw his own body on the cross. And in the same way, Jesus must have been moved in his spirit when he saw the, the water was turned into wine. In it he saw um, his blood poured out on the cross. He got his blood from his father, who is the creator God himself. Therefore, it is the most precious and holy blood ever given. And he knew he must pour his blood soon, for without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And now come to the miracle itself, miracle of bread. Where and when did actually the miracle happen? The multiplication happen? Did it happen in the hands of Jesus? No. He broke it. He blessed it and then he broke it. And the disciples were given the broken pieces of the bread. And he would not have broken it if it had been multiplied in the hand of Jesus himself. He did not multiply the bread in his hand. He would not have broken the bread if he had multiplied the bread. Now what he put in the hands of the disciples were the broken pieces. He did this, the, the disciples while holding the pieces in their hands, imagine the facial expressions, expressions of uh, Thomas, Peter, John, and uh, Matthew, and uh, Thomas, and other disciples. The bread never multiplied in the hands of the disciples either. So then, what is the mystery? When and where? Did the multiplication happen? There is one explanation which can be found in the act of Jesus when he picked up the bread uh, along with the basket and lifted it up to his God, his Father in heaven and blessed the bread with thanksgiving. And uh, in that act, of blessing the bread with thanksgiving, the potential and power entered into the bread. The power to increase and the power to multiply the bread was already entered into every part of this bread for multiplication. What was needed now is the obedience of his disciples. They start giving it away. In that act of obedience, the miracle of multiplication happened. My friends, with Jesus, as we know, all things are possible. And the fact that he refused to send the crowd away by the suggestion of the disciples who were puzzled when Jesus told them, you give them something to eat, they need not to go. And when he said this, this sentence, the disciples were wondering, what does he mean that we feed this huge multitude? That was something impossible. But Jesus knew better. He knew what he himself was going to do. He was going to bless the bread with thanksgiving and present the bread first to God the Father, the Creator. And in that simple act, but very essential and important and powerful act, the potential for multiplication 
has already entered into that bread. And as I said, what was needed was obedience. Though what was placed in the hands of the disciples were broken pieces, and they were wondering what we are going to do with these broken pieces, there were only 5,000 men, men alone. And consider the, uh, the, the young people, children, and the women. They will always outnumber the men. And such a huge multitude, they were wondering. But what was needed was their unquestioning obedience. And that's what they did. They started giving it away. And giving it away. And every time they gave, they looked into their basket, they still had the same bread kept on coming that baskets never went dry or empty. They gave and gave and gave, they ate and ate and ate again and again until everyone was satisfied and when they looked at the crowd and the plates before them, they saw a big collection left over. And Jesus told them, don't let any piece be lost collect them and they collected 12 baskets full of leftovers the the faith in action and what was the action in obedience they began to give it away my friends if you want to multiply your ministry don't consider it as your ministry. Give it into the hands of Jesus. It is his ministry. Do you want your life to be multiplied and become useful? Give your life completely to the ownership and lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let him have you. And if you want your talents and abilities to multiply. Give them all to Jesus. You don't own anything. They say, Lord, it's all yours. First of all, it came from you only. I am giving it back to you. And that's what Jesus is looking for. Anyone who is willing to give whatever he is and whatever he has back to God, stating, this is all yours. First of all, I receive it from you. It's yours here. I am surrendering myself and all that I have. And then be obedient to him. Whatever he says, do it. That's what Mary told the servants in Cana. When there was a wedding, which is the other miracle. And my friends, this is how you experience a miracle of, of multiplication of your life and talents and ministries and abilities and everything. You take them all, disown them, and give them to the ownership of Jesus. May the Lord bless you as you willingly do it. And right now, you bow before God and say this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am surrendering myself and all that I have, everything into your hand. It's all yours. You do whatever you please to do. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you do it and see the miracle. God bless you. And this is a great day to experience such miracles in your life. And have a good day and glorify God. Amen.